really start to parse out these subatomic particles that were part of it. We have electrons, and you should have learned from the FET that its charge is minus one, but it has a mass of zero, basically. And that's not to say it doesn't weigh anything. It just weighs so much less than anything else in the atom that it's essentially nothing. And a nice image for that would be here, where a proton equals 1,836 electrons. So it's not that an electron doesn't weigh weighs nothing. It's that it weighs so little compared to a proton that it's essentially nothing. So the things to pay attention to from what we did is the charge comes from the electrons and the protons. The protons have that positive charge. The electrons have that negative charge. Whereas the mass comes from the protons and the neutrons. All right, so the proton isn't the only thing here that has both mass and charge. Electron has charge and neutron has mass, but they don't have either. So we use this AMU, this atomic mass unit, to basically not have to use scientific notation every time we talk about the mass of a proton. Because again, if you look at this, the mass would be right uh 26 zeros right on and on and on, and on a lot of zero and then uh 1673 after a whole bunch of zeros so rather than have to do that every time we just uh use this atomic mass unit and we make that equal to 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms all right so notice that the atomic mass units of a proton and neutron are pretty much similar. So we just call them one and we call the mass number of the electron zero because essentially it's, uh, as we talked about, significantly less than the proton and therefore the neutron. All right. So walkaways, electrons have that negative charge. That's why we put that little negative sign protons have a positive charge that's why we put a positive sign neutrons have no charge so they get a little zero all right so a little more atomic number they uh the geniuses who put this together have decided that z was a good uh symbol for atomic number even though there's no z in there i will never ask you about that though don't worry about it it's the number of protons so the atomic number is the number of protons and that is what defines the element. Hopefully you learn that. God willing, you learn that when you did the FET, right? Because as you added protons, you changed the element. In fact, this is even better. Let's uh, reset that. As you add protons, the element went from hydrogen to helium to lithium, right? To beryllium. You can see it here changing. So it's the protons that change the element. This doesn't change the element. It's still boron. This doesn't change the element. It's still boron. So protons define the element. Take an element away, now it's beryllium. Put a proton away, now it's lithium. Put it back, it goes back to beryllium, right? Neutrons and electrons don't define the element. You can put as many or as little as you want, and it doesn't really matter. Okay, for what kind of element it is. So atomic number is the number of protons because that's what defines the element. The mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons. So again, you should have figured that out when you were doing this. Here's the mass number. So if I add a neutron, there's two. If I add another neutron, now it's three. If I add another proton, now it's four. So my mass goes up only with neutrons and protons. It will not change based on how many electrons are in there. And you should have figured that out by doing the thing. So mass number is all about protons and neutrons. And the last thing you should have learned is that the charge is due to the electrons gained or lost. All right, if there's no charge, protons equals electrons. Uh, if there is a charge, then one of them is out of balance. Recall from our model of what an uh, atom looks like. Uh, well, let's just do this. Let's do this atom then. This is what an atom looked like. The electrons are the things you lose because they're on the outside. Okay, the electrons are on the outside. You don't really mess with the nucleus. You can pull electrons away or you can put electrons in, but you don't really pull protons out of something. That's because it's in the nucleus. All right, so moving on, moving on. So ionic charge is due to uh, electrons gained or lost. 
protons, if they equal electrons, then we say it has no charge. So we're going to kind of play that game for the first day, is that we're going to assume there's no charge. So nuclear notation is written such that the mass number A, mass number A, another bad symbol now that I think about it, because there's no A in mass number. Um, and come to think of it, they had an A to use, and they didn't use it for atomic number. What were they thinking? All right, getting back to this. Mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. It goes up high. The atomic number is just the number of protons. It goes down low. So the atomic number is down low. The mass number is up high when it's written in nuclear notation. So this is just talking about one atom. If you go to the periodic table, if you go to the periodic table, some of you may have learned this already right there's this number at the bottom here that is all the atoms of nitrogen so this number down here is all the atoms of nitrogen averaged out we're talking about one atom so we don't really use that number on the periodic table for just the homework you're gonna do about this that number on the periodic table is significantly more important we'll talk about that a heck of a lot more but we are just talking about one atom here and such that we had to bring up that, all right? So that's one atom, I had to turn it red. So this is just one atom, all right. So one, we're talking about things Dalton got wrong. He said atoms of the same element are exactly alike. That's not exactly true. There's things called isotopes, which have the same number of protons, but different neutrons. So that's not exactly alike. And then there's also things called ions, which have the same protons, but different electrons. Since protons define the element, um, that kind of doesn't get switched around much. Okay, so on the periodic table, the number, the atomic number, the number of protons goes up high, and the average atomic mass, which is many atoms, goes down low. Okay, so here's nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven protons by definition, and then it has a mass of 14 average of many atoms. Here's fluorine, so the atomic number is 9, so it has 9 protons. Its average atomic mass is almost 19. So that's why we have these odd numbers with decimal points in the average and not just the perfect numbers, the whole numbers that you would have for your homework. All right, now, here's the part where you look like this, and this is just me humble bragging about how awesome my studio is, in case you were wondering. All right, you're like, wait a minute. Didn't you say the mass number goes on top and the atomic number goes on the bottom, but on the periodic table, the atomic number goes on top and the mass goes on the bottom? Yeah, another great decision was to reverse these. So in nuclear notation, we put the bigger number, the mass number on top, and the smaller number, the atomic number, or the number of protons on the bottom. And on the periodic table, we reverse. So thanks, science. Okay, so there's also something called mass number notation, which is to say you say whatever the atom is, the element, and then you put a dash, and then you say what the mass is. The reason why this is as helpful as this is because, of course, argon has 18 protons. That's what argon is. Argon, by definition, has 18 protons. Whoops, that's chlorine. Let's talk about argon. Argon has 18 protons. There's lots of different argons that have different numbers of neutrons, hopefully. Yeah, look at them all, look at them all. The thing all these have in common though is they all have 18 protons. So argon comes in many flavors, but they all have the 18 protons, that's how it's defined. All right, so that is repetitive. So if you say the word carbon, you already know you're talking about six protons, then just having the mass number. So this gives you all the information of this, only it just uh, knocks out that little middleman thing of the protons. Anyway, all right, so let's talk about isotopes like we just saw with argon. There are isotopes of atoms, and basically it means they all have the same protons, right? So this element is hydrogen because it has one proton, but the number of neutrons differs. So you can have no neutrons and have a total mass of one, you can have one neutron and have a total mass of two, or you can have two neutrons and have a total mass of three. They're all still hydrogen because they have one proton. They sort of much, pretty much react the same. And again, if we go back to the FET, we go back to the FET, 
and we build these atoms. So let's take these away to hydrogen. There's hydrogen. So here's what we would call tritium, which has, uh, oops, too much there, one proton and two neutrons, okay? This is what be deuterium. It has one proton and one neutron, and this is just plain old hydrogen, which has the one proton. If we do the stable unstable thing, you'll notice that's stable, as is deuterium, the one proton, one neutron. When you put that second neutron in there, now it's unstable. So this one actually is radioactive, even though it's hydrogen, it uh, releases some energy. And we're going to talk about that uh, in this unit as well. All right. So, Mr. Roach, how does this relate to the homework, you ask? Let me show you. So here is a sample chart that I would love to give you, but I haven't quite figured it out online uh, yet. But we used to just give you something like this for on a piece of paper. All right. So this first thing, we're looking for the mass notation, the nuclear notation. All we're given is the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. All right. So protons define the element. There are four protons. We hit the periodic table. And if you need a periodic table, there's a printable one there, or you just search ptable.com. Four protons is beryllium. Those go hand in hand. So beryllium has four protons. So we're going to make the world know that we know this is beryllium. Let me do a darker color so you can see it. So this is beryllium. Oops. There you go. How's that for chicken scratch? All right. So that is what that is. That's beryllium. Now, the protons and the neutrons combine to give you the mass. So these two numbers, the protons and the neutrons, combine to give you the mass number. So 4 plus 5 equals 9. So our mass number is 9. So that's beryllium 9. And then we would put in the nuclear notation, we want the number of the mass on the top. And we want the number of protons on the bottom. So we would want that 9 up top. We would want those protons down here. So that is our nuclear notation for beryllium. The charge comes from... Oops. Didn't want to do that. All right. So the charge comes from... I guess I haven't used light blue yet. So the charge comes from the electrons and the protons. In this case, they're equal, so therefore the charge would be zero. All right, so again, thinking back on what we did here, if we have four electrons and we have four protons, let's ignore that. And we have uh, some neutrons. All right, so if we have four protons and four electrons, the net charge is zero because they're equal. There's one for every one, right? So it's unfortunate that we use the plus and the minus. It would be better if we said male or female or Republican and Democrat or, you know, uh, up or down because this tends to confuse people about is there math involved? And it's really not. It's just a matter of, who won the the election here? And the election here was a tie, so nobody won. There was a zero charge. If we add an electron, now the blue won by one, right? So this is just saying the blues won by one. And if we put two more protons in there, this would be saying that the reds won by one because there's one more proton than electron. All right, so getting back to this, uh, That's how we fill that out. So let's do this next one. Oxygen, all right, O, the proton number goes down there. So what we know for certain is that we have eight protons because that's what makes oxygen oxygen. Our neutrons, we don't know yet, but we do know that our mass, our mass number is up high, and that's a 16. And so what we saw up here is the mass is a combination of the protons and the neutrons make the mass. So this plus that is going to equal 16. So therefore, we know our neutrons are 8, because 8 plus 8 equals 16. So that tells us that we have oxygen 16. All right? 
And then the electrons, based on the fact that the charge is zero, what we saw up here is that that means the electrons and the protons were equal, right? If these are equal, then your charge is zero. So that must mean that there are eight electrons in the situation. So this next one has eight protons as well. Wait a minute, eight protons, what the heck? That still means it's oxygen. So we still are talking about oxygen because eight protons defines what oxygen is, right? If we look on our periodic table, oxygen is defined by the fact, I mean, heck, I can do it right here. Eight protons is oxygen. That's what it is. And if you go to the periodic table, eight protons is oxygen. Okay, right there. So one case, this had eight neutrons. So in one case, we had eight neutrons for a total of 16 for our mass. So I'm going to put in the eight there. So in one case, we had 16 for the mass. In this case, our mass is, uh, we have 10 neutrons. So it still has the eight protons, but now it has 10 neutrons. So its mass is 18. It's still oxygen. It's telling me it's still oxygen, whether it had the 16 of the line before or the 18 of the line we're doing now. It's still oxygen. One is O18 and one is O16. So we're going to call this oxygen 18. And we would say these are isotopes. They're both oxygen. What they differ by is the number of uh, neutrons. All right. Electron wise is going to be the same because the charge dictates uh, from electrons and protons. And then the mass number is the 8 plus 10. So that's a total of 18. And then our oxygen symbol would have the 8 down here for the protons and the 18 up here for the neutron, for the mass. So these are both oxygen. One has a mass of 16, one has a mass of 18, so they're isotopes. So this last one, sodium 23, if we're looking at sodium, sodium is not on this, unfortunately, but it is here. So there's sodium. Sodium, by definition, has those 11 protons, right? That's the definition of sodium. So we're going to say 11 protons because that's what sodium is. Uh, it's sodium 23. That 23 is telling us the mass. So that goes over here. And remember that mass comes from the neutrons and the protons. So if the mass is going to come from this plus this, 11 plus what equals 23? Well, it's 11 plus 12 equals 23. So we're talking about sodium, which has a uh, a symbol of Na. There are 11 protons always for sodium, and there are 23 total massive things in there. Now notice here, this has a charge of plus one. So we played a little game here. I kind of stung you a little bit. So this is a plus one charge. So a plus one charge means the electrons and protons are not the same. So if we have a plus one charge, Right. If we have a plus one charge, then we've lost an electron because we can't take away. That does not want to go there, does it? Stay there. OK. Um, we can't take away protons because then we'll change sodium to something else. But if you take away an electron, now the pluses are winning by one. So it's a plus one charge. So we're going to take away one electron in this case from equal. So equal would have been 11. Taking one away would mean we have 10 electrons. All right. So that's going to be your homework. You're going to try to fill out one of these charts. And I will have office hours if you need any help.